Hello, YouTubeites. This is Elwood Woodmaker. Uh, coming back to you with a video I said I was going to do. It's going to follow up to the uh, to my last video where I showed a whole table full of uh, leather things that I made back in the day. And I was going to go into more detail and tell some stories about uh, a few more of my items. Uh, and so this is the first one of those series of videos. A little housekeeping. I'm smoking, uh, finishing up a bowl of uh, some esoterica and so to bed. And uh, just about done with this. Smoking it in my uh, Dagner uh, green acrylic stemmed double ants they had on special a while back. I like the long stem. Everybody's into the short pipes, which I think are cool. But, uh, it's about done. Um, I don't know, I get a lot of tongue bite, so my tongue's kind of sensitive, so give the smoke more time to cool in a shorter, you know, short, uh, longer stem. Anyway, leather work. Um, so this series, this segment here, is I'm going to show you all the belts and belt type items and belt buckles that I made. Um, I haven't made a belt in gosh a long time. I, I, uh, you know, I could I guess. I uh, just don't really uh, not into the cowboy belts like I used to be. Obviously, uh, back in high school I was I hung with a cowboy crowd. I wasn't a cowboy, not a real one, but you know I dressed the part. Um, but some of my friends were actual real cowboys and. You know, I go to their house and stuff, or go to rodeos with them. Um, anyway, that's not the point. Point is, uh, I was trying to figure out, like, trying to remember on these belts. I got a, a few of them here. I was trying to remember, like, what, uh, which was the oldest, which, you know, I want to show them chronologically. From, uh, uh, you know, the oldest to the newest. And uh, so I, I got to thinking, gosh, I didn't date all of these. I didn't stamp the date on them or anything. Then I realized, oh. I could go by length <laughs> because the first belt I made was the uh, when I was the skinniest, obviously. <laughs> um, and so the shorter they are, the older they go back. And the longer they are, the newer they are. So uh, it's just, I mean, these are kind of wore out. You can see that this is this is the first belt that I, and I, I probably have, I probably made belts that I don't still have or whatever. But this belt, and I, I'm pretty sure I made a belt before this one. I don't think I started out with a filigree, a filigree belt on the very first belt I did, but uh, I don't I don't remember what belt buckle I used to wear with this one, because it doesn't still have a belt buckle on it. Um, it's lined in the back, you can see, and of course you can see how I ended my stitching. I just because this is really stiff, uh, kind of a I don't know what it is. It's it's not just leather stitching. It's kind of a plastic leather. Uh, stitching but uh, it's a fully lined belt and uh, and then you can see that I had cutouts in the uh, a cutout where you would normally do background shading I cut it out and then of course I have a lot of belts you know with my name on the back I had to figure out where that goes but then I but I, I, I dyed the background piece of this leather um, I dyed it um, red and then with the brown and I look pretty good I cut out my name and then of course you can see where the middle of the belt all, all of my belts you know wore out like that and uh, but uh, punched all those holes did all that lacing you know I always did everything by hand but again this is I'm talking this is a uh, high school or junior high that I made this but uh, so that's belt number one and that was a, a filigree belt that I did. Belt number two is going to be um, not too dissimilar really, except it's not filigreed. In fact, is that the same exact pattern it might be? And uh, it's a little bit longer. And you can tell, you know, with the white stain, and I was not very good at painting. I still, <laughs> I'm still not, and I'm still trying to get better at it. But uh, I think this is a, maybe the exact same pattern. This is a very common pattern. It's one of the 
patterns I probably had in a craft day and I probably still have it. But here, instead of cutting it out, I did the actual backgrounding and it's not lined. But again, same trick with the, uh, with the lace where all I did was uh, wear it like that. I don't know why I ended it that way, but I did. So where I ran out of, where, since I couldn't, uh, since I couldn't exactly, uh, didn't have, I couldn't do it all with one piece, I had that break. Again, this is me not, you know, we didn't, I didn't have the internet back then. I couldn't look up, you know, the right way to do things. So that's belt number two. Uh, belt number three that I still have starts with a Coca-Cola belt buckle. And a little bit different uh, pattern. Uh, those kind of flowers, again, another craft date, I'm sure. I did all the tooling by hand, repetitive. And again, you know, it's hard. it was hard for me. I didn't put my name on this one. That's good. So this one has no name. Obviously the same wear pattern where the middle was. That's where the name would have been if I was doing that on this one. And a little bit of a, you see how it's a wide buckle or a wide belt, but then it's got the, pat, the it's got the, uh, I always like that, the fact that it goes wider and has that little, uh, fill, uh, I don't know what you call it, but I did the edging, made the edge all the way around, you know, finished it. I don't know if I, I, I think I probably bought belt blanks. I didn't do these snaps. So I don't think I did, but that's it. I didn't say anything, but uh, the back of the belt buckle and uh, just a piece of, nice piece of leather. So I, I, I kind of like that one. Um, Obviously, none of these fit me anymore, because I'm a, I've uh, got kind of big. But uh, so this one, this one's kind of interesting. Start it here. Uh, got this. I used to live in Grand Junction, Colorado, and I don't think I wore this belt buckle on it. I think I got this belt buckle after my grandpa died. I don't know. I think it was his, and I think I just put it on here, maybe later in later years as a placeholder. But uh, so this one has the oak with the oak. Uh, leaves pattern and you know got the nice now this is actual I think this is actual more leather <laughs> lacing than plastic leather but uh, I did another filigree with my name this time the other way around and that is uh, if it's any of it left is that's uh, some snake skin so I lined it with snake skin that I got a hold of somehow and uh, made a really cool I like I, man when this was was uh, brand new and unworn it was uh, was really nice um, but the other interesting thing and I'm gonna probably be talking about this a lot is that this piece of leather in the back here is not the snakeskin the snakeskin is between this piece of leather and I only didn't I only did it during through the part that I filigreed I didn't do the whole back of the belt I didn't line the whole back but this piece is elk hide and uh, like I said, I'm going to repeat this in several videos, but my uncle used to go hunting a lot. My, whole, my grandpa, my uncle, my dad too. Um, but my dad's sister's husband and him and his brothers would hunt a lot and they would get elk. And I guess one year or so they um, had the elk hides turned into uh, shirts. And uh, he had a beautiful elk shirt. When I was in high school, he gave it to me. And I would wear it to school, but it was a, a, a whole elk shirt, not fringed or anything, but like a, just like kind of a Western placard shirt. It didn't button up. It was a pullover. It was really beautiful. But, he, but from that process, he had leftover pieces of elk hide. And he gave that to me because I was doing leather work. And, he's, and I incorporated it into a lot of uh, different projects. So you might see more of that as we go in other videos. But uh, eventually when I outgrew that shirt, which didn't take long, cause I was you know, in, the, in my growth spurt around that time, one of my growth spurts. Um, because it's a, you know, that's a very precious kind of heirloom thing. My, my dad uh, asked me to give it back to him so that he could uh, pass it down to his, his actual sons and, and, uh, and they could pass it down. And I hope they still have it. And I hope that they're doing that. Um, so now we're going to move on to the last uh, actual belt that I made that I still have. And we're going to start with this belt buckle. And I don't know if I made this early on or in later years, but um, again, some more snake skin that I got. I think I got it at a, in a trade for some knives or leather work. And uh, so I sort of came up with this. Um, this is a custom pattern that I made up. 
I, I, I did this knife. You'll see it a, 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 again. Well, you'll see some other similar things, but um, I, 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 you know, hand drew this knife, did the filigree, put the snake skin behind it, did the latigo uh, lacing around the outside, which I really love that look. Man, I love that look. Done that on many, on several knife sheaths through the years. And then this is just a snake skin belt, okay, that I used to wear in college. And, uh, yeah, I was quite the guy with cowboy boots and this snakeskin belt. Now, I got this as a completed belt blank with, I, I think, again, I think I got it in a trade or something. I didn't put the snakeskin on the leather here, but I did, you see that stitching? I did hand sew all of that, the whole edging, because I was afraid, because the way the snakeskin was glued on, and you can see that it does wear pretty, you know, pretty easily. And I was afraid, as it did, it was going to all flake off and go away. So I wanted to kind of secure it a little bit more. They had it glued on. Again, I think I got this in a trade with a guy for some for some stuff. But anyway, um, so every one of those holes and every and that waxed thread through the whole thing. And I have to say, I think this was sort of more at the height of my, well, it's not perfect, of course, at all. It's hand done. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a master at any time. Still, still, I'm not, of course. Um, so that, but that's all the hand stitching that I uh, <laughs> sat there and did. I used to, I mean, I love hand stitching. I really do. I don't mind it at all. I'll do a big project like this, or you'll see some other heavier things. Um, now, along with the belts through the years, I did a few, and I don't know the years on any of those belts. I, I did them. Like I said, I started, my first belt was junior high, and my last belt was when I was in college. So throughout the years, and again, there's probably some others that I've made and lost or whatever. I don't think I, I can't say, I don't think I've ever given away a belt or made a belt. Or somebody else, I may have some at some point. Mostly the stuff I would ever do for other people was knife sheaths that I don't have anymore. Uh, I did make this one belt one time. There was a belt kit from Tandy. And I, uh, I have a, a craft aid with these this alphabet. And I put the K on there. And I did the resist method where, you, where you, I painted all but the edge with this uh, sort of this um, sheen, uh, super sheen or the equivalent back then. And then I, I stained it. And the, so it's darker here and lighter here and dark in the middle. I didn't do that. I am still trying to get this to work right these days. The products that I did this with back in the day work beautifully and I don't they don't make those products anymore and I'm trying to find the equivalent on those rounders that I've been do, that I've been doing like for Christmas presents and stuff. The videos in YouTube now say to use Super Sheen and then use the antique or use and it didn't it's not working right. Not like it used to. But the rest of the belt buckle's gone. Um I don't know what I did with it. And you can see I had it. I had to cut it out. I don't know. I ruined that. But um, now here's a belt buckle. It's going to blow your mind. Are you ready? This is a belt buckle. Ta-da. Yep. Isn't that cool? So I was at a knife show. I was actually in, I don't know what it was, 1982 or three or four. I was at a knife show, uh, and I wasn't just at it. I was selling True Balance throwing knives there at a table. And so that weekend, I, you know, did a lot of horse trading and whatever. I ended up buying this little caping knife from uh, directly from Gordon Johnson. And he's out of Houston, Texas. There's his, there's his maker's mark right there. But um, the, uh, and then it's number, what, it says it's got a 577 on it. But um, that uh, is a beautiful little knife. I bought a complimentary ivory micarta handled larger hunting knife. And I was going to put together a set where they both went in the same sheath. But in the meantime, I also made this belt buckle sheath. Now, this is a trophy, a fake rodeo trophy buckle that I, you know, just had like a Western kind of pattern on it. But it was one of those big rodeo buckles. And I, uh, I took off whatever decoration was on it and then I you know then I cut out and 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 added um the leather on top um 
did my little stamp. That's what I used to do, handcrafted by Kenneth E. Gary. A little cowboy stamp, and then this is when I... And 84 seems to be the only year I really dated anything. Really put dates on anything. But, uh, you know, it's this... Uh, with the leather on it, it barely holds on the buckle. I mean, I don't remember if I ever put it... I never actually have worn this. This was just a, a practice piece, but I kind of hand did some, some sort of, you know, decoration. Built up the sheath, and you'll notice that, you know, it's all contoured so that the knife can be flat and come out because the knife isn't going to curve around the belt but I had to like build up all these different layers and lace through them hand lace you know through those and uh, and of course then you've got the uh, the cutout now I did the background I had some uh, uh, kind of a uh, um, I don't know what you call this some leather that had a uh, embossing on it kind of made it look like I'm not sure what but that's so that the uh, so that the knife could get closer to the actual buckle to fit in there and so that this didn't have to be so high but again you know you can see it's quite the uh, <laughs> quite the uh, piece there but uh, I thought that was pretty cool and so this is a cool this is a kind of creative thing that I really like to do I really like to come up uh, with stuff like that so so that's like a, a a cool little project and then the last thing i'm going to show you today is another belt buckle i made and again i just again i'm i'm, a, I'm into knives big time um or i don't know if it's not totally big time but i like knives a lot so i you know i came up with this buoy design i don't know why i keep putting my finger in front of it so you can't see it um this uh buoy design i uh things that I knew made a nice uh, pattern. I should show you closer, shouldn't I? Um, and then uh, put, I even put uh, I even put my initials KEG as if I was the knife maker on the on the blade. And then um, you know again this was I think you know that first belt I showed you the very first one that had the red now that I'm thinking about it, I was wondering what belt buckle I had on it. I think it was this belt buckle. This used to have, this is a brass belt buckle, and I think it had some coral colored or red colored stones on it. Kind of like a, a I don't know. But again, handcrafted by Kenneth e. Gary. With This was sort of my, this is my brand right there back in the day. And then, uh, what does it say? July 4th, 1984. Now, was it literally July 4th or was it nearby July 4th? I, since it was probably close to July 4th and I thought it would be cool to say it was, you know, July 4th, uh, that's why I put it. So it probably may not have been literally. But then uh, I did the nice uh, stitching around the edge and that's very, very complicated to do. And uh, But it turns out beautiful when you do it. I just love that. I'm not getting a good view, but I just love that, that, um, stitch as well um i i don't remember how to do it i would have to go and look it back up again to figure out uh <laughs> but you know there's plenty of I, I still have the instructions and everything but i could do it again uh but that's fun you do round holes i think and then do all that but uh again this is you know i gotta get back up to doing stuff like this and back up to to me this is some of you know some of my best work um and uh, so that's so that's uh, the first installment of uh, showing you details and telling stories about um, the leather work I showed you in that long video where everything was stretched out on the table. Um, it was it's a nice uh, blustery day here in Venice, Florida, raining outside. Uh, I'm out in the shop doing this video, and. Uh, I just want to close it by saying thanks for listening. Thanks for spending time uh, uh, hearing my stories about this old leather work. And uh, once I get done with these videos, my plan is to just keep working on stuff and keep showing you, you know, showing you what it is. So uh, this is Elwood Maker, and uh, gonna say good goodbye for today. See ya.